plastic comedy. I changed our Instagram okay. name, I'll, so we need I'll, to change. Yeah, this. you want you want the hard, but I want it with the splat. You want, I want splat? I want the splat that you do when it that I already do the did. Splat. I want that image here. Yeah. Okay. So but the, the, but the thing I already made. Yeah, the thing you already made. So like the cut. I want it to be messy. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we okay. obviously changed it. Mm-hmm. And then I want so hard plastic comedy with Hillary Herbert and Josh Edelman. Um, and then I want uh, when the for the teaser clips that you send me, I want hard sexy comedy with the splat. On you want the that. splat on the end there? Too. No, in the beginning. You in have the it beginning. at the end. When it's just the black screen. Oh, and you want to say hard sexy on an all new hard sexy. Hard, hard, now it says hard sexy comedy. It needs to say hard plastic. Gotcha, comedy. gotcha, gotcha. I can do it. Okay, I can do it. Hard that. plastic comedy with Hillary Herbert and Josh Edelman. We've fully committed. Now we're committed. She We've committed. Done it. I made. I. I made. I had no decision making power in the matter. No, that's for sure. <laughs> There's a good reason for that. Not I, letting I ex- anyone I accept, drive my train into the. I ground. accept my position. Okay. Um. So Josh, mm-hmm. how are you doing? Well, Josh just had a lot of interesting things to say before we started recording, and let me new, know that I'm not allowed to talk about any. I of have it. a new thing I say actually when people ask me how I'm doing because because I a I don't like lying up and not crying. No, no, no. a I, people don't like that. a I I don't like lying. I don't like American going great. I don't like going. I'm that. doing I'm doing amazing uh-huh. when I'm not doing amazing. No but I also that. don't like getting into it. So I just go could complain. Could complain. Could complain. Okay, I think you might run into some trouble. With no, because you know people are like, can't, I understand can't the, you said it, and I, I got it, I and do, I understand the whole. I thing. I feel like people don't want to hear people complain, so they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> it works. Okay, it okay, okay, ends things. okay, okay. Could complain. could complain. I think your inflection was a little off. You said could complain, could complain, could complain. a little higher on the could, could complain, could complain. Yeah, <laughs> could not gonna, could. but could I could. Complain. Um. Okay. Good. We love to hear it. Um. We're going to start with a shout out to my favorite supportive plastic surgeon, Dr. Jay Calvert. The reason being is that uh, he he follows us. Mm. He's one of two doctors that follows us. The other doctor is very quiet on Instagram, so I'm not going to, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sensitive towards. Towards their privacy if they're. Yeah, and being a, I'm, I could understand maybe why someone might not want to be associated with the show necessarily. Um, so, you know, until I get a hard yes, you know, which I guess a follow is because they really follow hundreds of them and uh, haven't really jumped on board yet. But um, uh, shout out to him uh, because he follows and is supportive and... Um, even though I imagine there are some things that did he I, did he do anything to expressly enjoy the shit posting that we did last time? He I did not ask him if he oh the shit posting on that I didn't ask him I don't ask him like what he's watched like how much of the show he watches mm-hmm. or anything like that, um, but he is supportive. And uh, I imagine that there are things that I do that he disapproves of. <laughs> but I, and I'm always like, oh, I'm going to scare this guy away. And, uh, but he's, he's supportive. And so we'll give him a shout out because he went live uh, yesterday evening. And I, I love it when I catch the, the doctors going live and you can see what they're doing. And he was playing guitar. He had a 12 string. And he's going to be performing at Molly Malone's on January 2nd. Oh, cool. 27th. Oh, I like Molly Malone. So I'm going to try to get over there. Yep, I used to frequent. I'm not frequent. coming, but I like Molly I, Malone. I didn't even <laughs> think to uh, put myself in the place to get rejected by you. So um, <laughs> uh, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with. So I don't know if he listened to the award show or anything like that. But Did he um, win any awards? He did. He won. I don't remember what I, I think I, it was some, similar to this, like the most supportive award or whatever it was. But I, I referred to him as very like, he's like very all American looking. And then a few days earlier he had gone live and it was a little, um, cut in and out. So I didn't hang in there, but, um, he was, I think he was talking about hockey and I was like, Oh, I bet he's Canadian. Like anyone that's like going live and he had a friend on or something like that and is talking about hockey is uh is probably Canadian. And um 
and and I was referring to him in the award show as being like very all American, but I think this is a great example of how when I'm wrong, I'm right. Because wouldn't you think don't you think maybe like Canadians are kind of like purebred Americans? No. Like Pam Anderson? Pam Anderson is a Canadian? Absolutely she is. But wouldn't you think of her as the most one of the most American iconic people that have uh been around? Yes. But I don't think that's because I think she These are one of the points that you can just agree with and move I can't. on. can't. You don't consider Pam Anderson? I just don't think Canadians are like all American. I think like I feel like I often I Pam Anderson may be an exception to this, but I feel like when I hear people are Canadian, I'm always like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Why? Because their heads are shaped well. I don't know something and they're about symmetrical. Something, yeah, something about them. Yeah, just they're all purebred. Canady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe purebred, purebred, too purebred. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Hard Nazi comedy. Hard. <laughs> Um, oh, that reminds me of something that, well, we might need to edit we're moving, this out. We're moving into a eugenics podcast. You should, well, I'm going to get really touchy here, and we might need to edit it out. No, don't say stuff. Well, it's not racial. <laughs> you're going to get to, you're gonna, we're going to, tomorrow, but can I come back on Sunday and re-record? I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so bad. You have a limited amount of time. You're going to, you can't do all stuff you're going to want me to cut. Um. So do you think it would be inappropriate for me to say, like, moving moving forward you know with this plastic surgery stuff that i see myself as the i can't say it no i can't say it the galane maxwell of plastic surgery but like legal yeah i, I don't know you can say that <laughs> it's a weird person to compare yourself to well she's a power i'm kind of like the woman. jared from subway of uh of podcasting <laughs> oh god okay in that i lost a lot of weight doing it. that's all <laughs> that's all i'm saying okay so um, shout out podcasting every day if you walk 10 miles to the studio and back you can lose weight um, that's all <laughs> 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 nothing else <laughs> the podcast diet um i'm gonna have a little trouble because these boots i can't take off alone Okay, well, can you pull? Can you try no, to? I can't. No, there's no, none of this. You're just wearing the <laughs> boots for the show below the table. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I thought I would. We'll get serious. Let's get serious here. Do we have more comments? Oh yeah. Yeah. Are, oh, do, yeah. are you getting? You're not going over well now. Josh. I'm not going over well. Going yeah, over I well. have a feeling. People think that I'm not. Um, like owning my true self by letting you dictate if I'm allowed to show yeah, my true self. Yeah, but in a way, in a way, in a way, they're not letting you show your true self by trying to sway you to show. My more. true self is absolutely, um, uh, uh, being appreciative, receptive, and giving. I, you should, the you gotta people. find a, <laughs> I'll keep recording, but maybe a new co-host. <laughs> yeah, 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 we might, I we might, might be, I might be canceled. You by, might be out. I might be canceled. You might be out. One of them thought that I can't even begin to have the feet conversation with you because you're a man. Like she mm. was like, listen, to, watch Josh is trying to understand, but he can't understand. You need to have a woman on there. Yeah. You know, yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah, the yeah, feet. Yeah. No, totally. I'll have Nikki. I told her, told him I'd have Nikki on lots of comments. Yeah. Lots of comments. All feet people. All feet people. All feet people. Feet people love the show. They love the show. I love the feet people. I just can't be, I can't be indulging. It can't be like unnaturally indulged for me. <laughs> uh, I understand. We all have our. You can't our... be asking me to take off your boots, Hillary. Well, that's what. <laughs> that's where. Well, that's, that's, that's me not being my true one self. Of the that's, texts that's at forcing, hyper, that's, one of the that's... texts at Hyperbarics about to take off my shoes in about 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Live stream that for the. For the feet people. They're not feet people. I've asked all of them about their preferences. Wait, what? No, 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 no. I'm saying that, film the hyperbaric yeah, person I, taking off your already. boots. Already. And then, and then when you release when we release this episode afterwards, if you go follow Hillary or the show, hard, are we, did you change the Instagram handle? Yeah, we're plastic. Hard plastic, at hard plastic comedy, you can see Hillary's tech person take the feet off just <laughs> okay so the couple things that now i you know now you the, know you just the, got some followers the couple the couple things that uh i want to touch on today there's so much there's so much i, I got to start getting here earlier but nobody talks about how funny i am no 
<laughs> um, uh, Hillary, uh, Nikki would do well. You know, she's a wiki. She's a, yeah, she's yeah, a yeah, high yeah, rated yeah, wiki. Yeah, 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 yeah. Theater. I'm excited. We're going to both put our feet in frame and we're going to have a great you conversation. You guys can even see a clip of Nikki's feet on the Drew Rogaine Experience podcast where I interviewed her. Oh, so that's okay. You well, got to be fucking kidding me, Josh. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You haven't even shared this show. You're you haven't you even th- shared this show on Insta like the our new like new episode out for 3 weeks. I'm sorry, I will this week. I mean, really. Nerve, I you feel, don't know what horse to bet on. It's Josh. usually it's usually feeling insecure with how I look. I understand, but like you're a dude and you look great. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. So feeling insecure about how you look. That's been coming up for me a little bit because I've and that's how I was going to tie it into um, to our favorite surgeon because um, one of our favorites. They're all very sensitive. You're all very handsome. All of your wives and partners are very good looking. Uh, you're all very good at your jobs, and I'm sure none of you actually cry privately. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> I do, and that's why I feel like it's okay to see it in other people. But you know, I I understand. We're all doing our best. Um. Uh, I think Dr. Calvert might be the right person to do my breast because it really takes um, an independent thinker to, um, it shows a, 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 just a certain amount of intelligence and, and confidence and all that. Where, because what's going to happen is, let's say I start interviewing all of these surgeons and and I will be flatter I will make them look good we're gonna do hand cam you know I'm gonna ask questions that are ego boosting and and all that and it's gonna be people are gonna want to be a part of it and then people are gonna start following along but what's happening right now is people are watching pri- secretly there's a little some secret watching you know and uh, and so for him to step forward and be you know um, visible and is shows just a lot of independent thinking and I like that so I think okay well this, and he's very talented and it's also you know it's like it's like it's showing initiative to get the to get the client sure yeah <laughs> I mean fair enough You're more likely fair to enough. go yeah, yeah, with a yeah, doctor yeah. That's, that's engaging with your business absolutely uh, absolutely so feels more reciprocal thank you Yes, and that ties into what I want to talk about, the insecurity, and then it also ties into the second thing I want to talk about. So thank you, Josh. You're always energetically there with me. Um, Maybe he can have my breasts undone. Right. Your breasts, you know, your body type is is a look, and yeah. it works. Yeah, I, I don't actually don't feel that bad about it, but sometimes I don't like how it looks. I no, Well, right. So, so, now, so what I'm dealing with is um, I, you know, I had my... I ha- I've had a few surgeries, but um, I the when I had my fat transfer, now I'm terrified. You know, I'm 42. My breasts, as they are, are great. Very happy with them. But if I lose weight, which right now I'm at a weight that I like it, but I'm lighting dependent. And I really don't like being lighting dependent. I really like feeling so confident that like, right in the sun, you know, feeling strong. Everyone's lighting dependent. There's not a single person on the face of the earth that doesn't sure, need good but, lighting. But I'm good. more lighting dependent than I prefer to be. I don't think that's... I, I, I'm that's, just telling I think, you I think, how I feel. You I think everyone's lighting Josh, dependent. Josh, this is a man listening and thing. We're all, and well, we're all... You can say, oh, I, understand, I hear that's... For God's sakes. Okay. So I'm more lighting dependent at the moment than I prefer to be. Okay. But at the same time, I've got stuff that I don't want to lose. Mm-hmm. So how do I keep this, slim this, don't lose, you know? And so I'm, I've been like terrified to lose weight because I don't want it to come out of my face. I don't want it to come out of my boobs. I don't want it to come out of my... um. But you don't need to lose weight. It's not a being smaller thing. It's like my I want my thighs to be like smooth looking in 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 all lighting kind of thing. Okay. You know, <laughs> is it this is I think does it make you uncomfortable that I talk about something that 
makes me insecure? No. That's This is not the deep insecurity that I was going to mention on the last podcast, by the way, but we didn't get to it. And we're not going to touch on it now. Um, so I'm I'm like, it's, uh, I'm like, ooh, like, where do I? And then you know what I realized? I was like, well, if I had someone, like, loving on me all the time, I would keep it all. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, that's how and I got. And I think it. And then I'm like, and that's how you got what? That's how I got fat. Because <laughs> nobody was sucking your dick? No, 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 because somebody was. <laughs> <laughs> I was in really great shape like a year and a half, like, like, like literally <sighs> best shape of my life. It motivated And then you. someone really liked me for who I was, and it was a problem. Oh, my God. I got in great shape because a person before them didn't like me for who I was. <laughs> I think I do it a little different. I think I like to be you know a little bit of arm candy so i like to maintain you know i i i go i like to do it both ways i'm in a real limbo obviously which i've talked ad nauseum about in different in older episodes but um i like to in a relationship be arm candy but if there's heartbreak i'll absolutely follow that pattern of like revenge body kind of thing like not not necessarily intentionally See, here's like, the here's the 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 tricky part about the revenge body mm -hmm. because it really I think it's ex dependent because it was like you know three exes ago she would comment on my body negatively sometimes so when we broke up that's when I even said to her during the relationship break up with me next time you see me I'll have a six pack um and then next time I saw her, right? You said and she said I, she didn't. I care. did not have a six pack. It was she's way harder. To, I, uh, but but the person after that, uh -huh. who I was dating while I was in shape, uh, was very health conscious. So I stayed in shape through that because we would like work out together and things, mm -hmm. um, and that was good. And then the person after that really liked me for who I was, was not interested in working out together, and would like order food at night just to take a bite, and then I'd eat all of it. Yeah, and yeah, over the course yeah, of a year, yeah, I gained yeah. everything back. Uh, but neither of the last two didn't like me as I was. I mean, well, clearly they didn't because they broke up with me. But uh, physically, so I don't feel the same physical level of motivation to get in shape that I did with the previous one. Gotcha. Well, I, I, again, I think you look great. And if you were curious about my experience at all, I'll just tell you. Yeah, okay, now let's hear the host's experience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are... God, could you imagine if someone thought I was more self-involved than you? I never said you were more self-involved than me. I know. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> um, I would never say that. So so I think now that we have our surgeon friend, which is what I was... Remember when I was talking about, you know, transitioning to the plastic comedy and going, but I need someone to to kind of take me under their wing and, 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 and be associated with me. And I just want to express again, like how emotionally helpful that is, because you know, as like a, con why are you smiling at me like that? I'm not. I'm just listening. Okay, I, I'm not used to it. Okay. Um, keep it up. Uh, it's uh, as confident as I might seem and am. I'm still a human being who's like wants to be accepted, you know. And so I, it makes me feel um, safe. And that's a great women love that. So um, do they? It depends how much work they've done, Josh. I mean, if you want to use the examples of women that you've dated, maybe not. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get safer than me. Yeah, but you're dating women that are, you know, truly troubled. Who knows? So, um. <laughs> And I don't blame them. It's a generation thing. I mean, the people, anyone like uh, your age or younger really got uh, the shit end of the stick in, in, in terms of environmental pressures and influences. And if you didn't have certain experiences or aren't smart enough to do some rewiring on your own, you're a, you're a, you're a ding dong. And there's a lot of ding dongs out there now. And, and that's just the way it is. Um... Okay, so the patient perspective. This is where, so last episode we were talking about um, uh, the, uh, we were talking about how, these conferences that they have and 
um, I was like, oh, I want to get in on the conversation and stuff like that. And it's not, you know, they can they can speak for themselves. They have all the knowledge, all the experience to represent their point of view. And I think what might be missing really across the board and why I think it and I and I do believe I'm an advocate for the male surgeons because the women surgeons are going to more naturally have this ability and that's to it's the emotional connection and a, and a larger understanding of um, the emotional journey that patients go through where the male surgeons it's you know the same communication issues that let's say maybe they might have with a, a partner or a child or you know a female partner or a female child they're going to have with patients too and they might not realize that that's the uh, an issue and that it it might not be an issue that's hurting them financially right now but it's an issue that if you can fix you're going to make that much more money so um i th i think of it like one time women have so when you're in that environment and you have, I mean, surgeons are hot. They're just hot. It's very, it's a very sexy career. If you, if you talk, if, um, what's his name? That, um, like surgeons are physically attractive or them being surgeons increases the level you're attracted to them. That one. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, that's what. But that me. to me is like, because awesome. I feel like they're nerd. They're people that were smart enough to, that's like one of the hardest, well, that's like one of the hardest doctors to become. Um, and they'll let you know that too. <laughs> uh, so, um, they, it's all, for me, it's the whole package that it's, a uh, you know, you know what you want, you go after it, you have this incredible skill. Not only do you make people more beautiful, you know, it's the whole scrubs and suits thing. It's a, it's a confidence in their craft. It's the whole, it's a very attractive to me, very appealing. And then it's a happy doctor. Like, um, it's a happy surgery kind of thing yeah, as opposed don't to, have to deal with insurance companies. like sick babies. Yeah. Most of the time. And um, so so what happens, I think, is if, Can you you're, help? if you're not comfortable setting, setting myself up for embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you're not comfortable um, talking to men or saying no or asking for what you want, you're certainly not going to do it in a doctor's office with someone that might be, you know, seem in intimidating. And um, what, like for an example, um, I, there's this place that I go to get my nails done, which I know, hey, one day soon. Um, they, they brought in a male nail tech. Never a good idea. Mm -hmm. I, and, and this wasn't like a flamboyant gay male. You'd go, okay, we'll give him a chance. This was somebody, and I'm not uh, not going to get canceled. This was somebody you go, I think there's other jobs that he's been doing leading up to this. And, and they have nothing to do with doing nails. And um, so I, um, you know, had one experience with a male tech at some point knowing, okay, I'm never doing that again. And so I go to this place now, and they bring in a, in a male nail tech, and I go, hey, look, I'm – no, I would rather not get my nails. If you can't shift this around, I'd rather not get my nails done or, you know, then sit through this. So you can either get me a woman or I'll reschedule. And um, and so they pass the nail tech, the, the guy off to somebody else. And you hear the woman going, ow. OK, wait, no, ow, you know. And then he goes, as I'm checking out, he's over on the other side of the room doing someone someone else. And she says, ow, ow. And I go. You know, and what these women aren't doing is they're not, even as they're getting hurt, they're not speaking up for themselves in a, in a walk-in nail salon. So if women can't do it in that environment, they certainly can't do it in a high, more high pressure, high emotionally charged situation like a cosmetic plastic surgery. So what I'd like to, um, express and and try to get the the male point of view to have a have a larger understanding of and i think a, a deeper understanding of and um is 
when when we're doing these videos and we're putting the camera we're asking the patient to begin with you know can i can i can i video your surgery okay you know can i oh can we record you right after and and get your reaction okay you're it's it it feels predatory to me and i think it takes away from their ability to sincerely experience and have their own opinion you know and possible reservations about what's going on and i think i understand that the marketing is a whole issue and everything and they all need to put stuff on the internet so i think a workaround could be um you bank it get get the material you need and and do it in the most sensitive way possible and 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 maybe have a woman have a conversation with the women because i think everyone has a right to go oh i don't know if this is right but th some of these surgeons are not giving women a chance to do that they're going you know you like it right and they're on camera and i think that there might be an underestimation of then these these women who probably have traumatic experiences from this that you know every woman's got emotional baggage and now they have to take it home and deal with it privately and maybe resentment builds up too you know there's a whole there could be a whole range of things that happen and i think it just is a better game plan to side to just go heavier on the side of sensitivity and and walking that line a little more delicately what uh what percentage of plastic surgeons are female i don't know the percentage but let me but like but let like, me, like your guesstimation um, based off of your okay. personal experiences um five percent what's never mind i'm going to show how bad that asked that question maybe five to ten percent and i don't even think it's close to ten percent i can look up the statistics ask me the question you're i think me. that google said that there's 700 pl plastic surgeons in california and like 500 of them are in los angeles is that i could be way off okay and now how many of those are women i'm just going on what i see on instagram um okay so i'm gonna tell oh and so to get so i'm not you know just making this up um in terms of the sensitivity and the sort of what i would i'm gonna call whoa there are over, predatory nature of are you ready for this what you're gonna say you're gonna you're gonna tell me this is wrong okay but according to this there are over 9,540 plastic surgeons currently employed in the United States. That I knew. 76.4% of all plastic surgeons are women, while 236 are men. And, and where are they hiding? <laughs> Out of Los Angeles? <laughs> Do plastic surgeons? <clears throat> that's what it says right here. It's that's wrong. I'll look for a more valid source. Um, Go on. So, uh, as a dance instructor, specifically a pole dance instructor and sensual movement instructor, um, I, I felt very early on. You know, I started my um, nonprofit pole dance and I you know wanted people to know about it and I wanted to record any dancer that came in and I wanted to be able to post it but pretty early on I checked in with myself and I said you know what this is not in their best interest it, to make them feel safe have we, do we have a correction yeah five to one ratio male to female what, what percentage is that five to one yeah uh like 20 percent okay so I was for every yeah you were close wrong. you were close you were wrong but you were much closer. <laughs> um, I was like that I I I will tell you that I did not believe the 
I was like, we need we need a fucking male rights movement in the plastic <laughs> surgery. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> I was ready to storm the charge. Um, put on put on a penis hat. Go marching through the streets of <laughs> of uh, downtown Los Angeles. <sighs> Um, Your body, our choice. Stop. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what I'm saying is, is just that from my experience, there's just some room for, um, I think, holding the patient's journey in in a more private um, way, is what I would suggest from a patient's point of view. Um, and a patient who has not been, you know, um, well, let me, so let me talk, let me fit, what do we got? Oh, we got a minute. Fuck. I want to tell my vagina story. I'm going to tell it really quick because it, ta it tags into this and it's not going to work at another. Okay. So when I got my vagina done, the reason I picked my vagina doctor was because I was looking online. I didn't do a whole heck of a lot of research because in my mind I was like, eh, there's not all, you know what I mean? How hard could it be? And uh, and the guy had a lot of things How going for him online. Can the yeah, most complicated organ in the human body. <laughs> be that's where you want so a female I, plastic okay, surgeon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, no. I, ha I have I have a guy. Uh, Guys looking in there is like, where who is would the be clitoris? To to? We gonna. <laughs> so yeah, right. <laughs> Always have so, trouble with that part. <laughs> so I so I found him and I saw his picture and and his picture he is not a flattering picture that he had online. He looked like a goon, mm. and I was like. Perfect. This is perfect. <laughs> you know, this goon guy, it's not, there's not going to be a, like, whatever. He walks in the room. He was very handsome. He was tall. He was handsome. And I, and I, it, there, energetically, I think I hit people right away. And it was like, okay, all right, well, here we are. And, uh, ah, shit. So, so he's, he's like, he's like, it's really hard to work on this sopping wet vagina. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm ovulating and not wearing underwear, and I'm worried that I'm gonna. Okay, so um, <laughs> so 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 we go ahead with the surgery. This is the guy who wanted. Okay, so I'm all worried about training and when can I train again after recovery? And so he has me, and this is embarrassing because it just shows like I am. I, I, I've. I have some wisdom. I have some intuition. I'm also incredibly naive. And I think maybe that's where some of the appeal comes in. So um, he has me. I keep, I'm at my team. My coaches are like, find out when you can do this. And like, we want to, you know, when can you get whatever. So I, I'm, I'm asking, you know, when can I do certain things? He goes, well, come in and show me the stuff. And we'll, and I can tell you like when you'll be able to do it. So I was like, oh, okay. So this is before I knew how surgery worked and like how the recovery and seeing the doctor after worked. I, I had never, this is my first surgery. And because I have my priority stream. And he, so I go in his office, I'm alone with him. And I'm on the, f <laughs> I'm on the floor being like, okay, like showing him the positions I'm in for training, being like this, this. And that's when the knee starts bouncing up and down his knee and I'm like and we I just saw and I and it clicked and I was like oh god and I just stood up and I was like okay well uh da, da, and it got kind of awkward and he goes well I mean you will be coming back once a week every week for like six weeks so we can gauge then like how much movement you can do and I was like wait what then what the fuck am I doing like what is this you know what I mean this situation so then he wants me to do his podcast and that whole yeah, thing yeah, came yeah, remember and, and then and then the so we set up the podcast which was scheduled after the surgery the surgery i need a revision they act like it's no big deal they they go oh we didn't mention that sometimes that you need like a little touch up i go no no one mentioned that which is i just think a great idea in at any surgery, surgery suggests you know sometimes we need revisions i know it's not a great sales tactic i understand that but if you really truly care about the patient the way that these doctors you know are you know now marketing themselves to now oh, this is a whole new marketing thing now we care about you is uh 
then let's have all the information. Mm-hmm. So, so, so they go, oh, you, you're coming in for a little touch up. So now it's like, you know what? It, we had a, a little, you know, it was, we worked it out. He tat was, he, yeah, he, he, he was receptive to communicating with me and we respected at the time each other. Mm-hmm. So it, w- we, we figured it out. And, um, and so I, oh, so after my first surgery, I have this surgery. It was a very special experience for me. I enjoy surgery. I'm kind of a weirdo like that. And, uh, like I enjoy the whole process and, um, they, they, I had to, they had, cause they did inside, outside, upside down the whole thing. And, uh, they had to wheel me out and he comes in the room right before he wheels me out. He goes, Hey, and I'm like not feeling well. And he already knew that and had to come and check in on me and like this whole thing. I almost fainted. It was a whole thing. So he comes and he goes, hey, so we've got a camera crew here because I'm just about to do a show. What do you think about as they're wheeling you down the hallway, you give like a hey or something to the camera crew? And I was like, I, it was, it was a crushing feeling. I felt so not seen, not taken care of, you know, like taken advantage of. And I was like, no. And you could just see the disappointment wash over his face. This is what we want to avoid. This is not good business. And then they wheel me out and there's 15 people in the lobby, a couple guys with cameras on their their shoulders it was just the most jar and here i am having this after i'm in a bathrobe after having this intimate surgery and and the nurse i'm like oh you know she heard me say and she goes just put your head down pretend you're asleep this is not the experience you want to have it doesn't sound like a hipaa (laughs) regulated horrible experience Mm -hmm. so Let's take that, let's take my, you know, but what I love about it is that it's given me the ability to see, okay, so here's the last thing I want to touch on. So this is why the, and it ties into the why why we need, why I recommend your professional on Instagram. That I have that experience. Now I, I, the whole time I'm healing, they're saying, you know, it's going to be fine. I go, no, 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 no. This is going to need a revision. I want the inner labia to be totally not protruding outside. That, that, that was the whole thing, right? So I was like, nope, it's not going to be totally healed. And they go, yes, 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 yes. For six weeks, yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Six weeks comes up. He goes, yeah, we're going to do a revision. No shit, buddy. No shit. And so then I have to go home and sit with that news. And I go in, which is devastating to me as a dancer, then I have to go, and then I go on on the internet and see him fucking dancing on TikTok and talking about how he's this master surgeon, but two separate posts. It feels like shit. It feels like you got dumped, and then you see your boyfriend partying with some hot whatever, you know, immediately after. That's the feeling. It f- you feel stupid and foolish and abandoned and so what I'm when I talk about these things and I know I get passionate about it is that I imagine these doctors especially the ones that even if I give like a little hard time to or the ones that I you know prop up um I really think that they're very beautiful people and that they want this information is that this is this is things that 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 they will absorb and go okay how can I incorporate that into my the way I do business and I think that I know it's scary to do things that might sacrifice a, you know a, a little money here and there but if you gain the reputation of being like daddy surgeon um I think more women will will flock to you than than the the other way around I love you guys. Can't wait to interview you. Okay, bye.